case. Andrew Haggerty, an insurance agent, was the Bastard Killer's fifth victim, fifth, in 18 days. The murder detail was already on the job. Surgeon, photography, and fingerprints. They could almost handle this particular type of case in their sleep. Not a detail missing. Not death by drowning her. Yes, and a large lump at the base of the skull. Knocked him out first. Our old friend, the blunt instrument, huh? Yes, but I don't know what shape. The body was submerged in the bath and dropped on his back. So we can safely assume it wasn't an accident. Not unless he was trying to take a nap underwater. <laughs> it's homicide, all right. It's a nasty way to go. Any prints yet? Only the dead man. Only a smudges, his own, the cleaning woman. Keep checking, Hawkins. I want samples of everybody in the house. The same method in each case. As if the fellow gets a kick out of drowning him. He probably does. That one pattern. There's no motive for the general picture. Well, he's a psycho. He's insane. He's still got to have a reason. He's a psycho. He's a psycho. 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 The drowning last night. Marion, I told you not to read such stuff. It scares the daylight out of you. I used to know Andrew Haggerty. Oh, the trouble on the papers. Did you know him well? Not really, no. I haven't seen him for years. But we lived in the same street with him. Ada Freeman, 27 years old. David Southby, 28. Edith Flaxman, 27. Samuel Winch, 28. Andrew Haggerty, 27, the last victim, sold insurance. He lived alone, but was seriously interested in a girl, and they discussed marriage. We had to find the motive. A common cause. Those five people are all in the same age group. All of them six months from now. That's right. No. The fact that they were all murdered the same way as the odd thing. Anyway, see what you can pick up in the birth certificates and marriage rights. That's the connecting link lies there. You know, families, relatives, past histories. Four of the bath stump killer's victims had been born within a few miles of one another and went back to the streets where the victims had been wheeled in their baby carriages, questioning people, seeking someone who might have remembered the victims as children. I had to find whatever it was that linked people together that might link others to a death by drowning. And in one street, the man we wanted watched us from his window. They started to look for me. But you mustn't worry yourself, Robert. I'm in complete command of the situation. The papers say that Fabian of the Yard is on the case. You have to get up much earlier to figure this one out. No, Robert, I'm I'm quite sure I've given him nothing to go on. No fingerprints, no one saw me. Not a single clue. Nothing. Oh, my son. It's your birthday next week. Twenty-eight candles for your cake. Soon it will be thirty. You'll have a good birthday present. I promise you that. All of them. They'll be with you then. All six of them. No, I've not found Marion Cortland yet. But I will. She's, she's not as easy as the others. I can't imagine where she's disappeared to. But if she's in London, I'll find her. to be married. The news item even gave her address. Well, Robert, she'll be at your party now, just as I promised. In the map room at the yard, the frequency of various types of crime is recorded on huge maps. Murder, robbery, auto theft, burglary represented by a colored flag or pin, a study as to districts, and spread throughout the city. Five red flags located the bathtub murders. An infection I had to stop. I'm very particular about bathrooms. May I see it, please? <laughs> well, there's no reason not to. Yes, this is my lucky day. Do both taps in the bathtub work properly? Of course they do. Will you, will you turn them on, please? Yes, it's perfect. Four out of five people killed by the same person being born within a mile of each other. Yes. Could be coincidence. Highly improbable. Now, they were killed because of something that happened in the past. You've checked on that angle, sir? Yes. yes, somebody from the past. Is it a 
Don't say where hatred starts. Oh, on the playground, at school, on the first job. School. Yes, we haven't dug deep enough there. Yes, of course, we're mixed up in that bathtub mystery. Well, we'd like your help, Miss Langley. Oh, I don't know. I don't want my name in the paper. But you'll remember Ada Freeman. Please tell me about her. Yes, Bobby Porter. He used to carry her books for her. My crush. He was far too much of a gentleman, just like his father. He dropped around to see him. Well, Inspector, I rather pride myself on my memory. Robert's schoolmates were my friends, too. Have you seen any of them lately? They were in and out of the house, but that was years ago. No, I don't imagine that Robert's kept in touch with them. Oh, so your son's away from her, is he? Yes. Brazil. You always plan for him to travel. He's doing very well out there. Now, what can you tell me about the others? Haggerty, Southby, Samuel Wench, Edith Flaxman. Oh, they've gone. All of them. Moved away. No. Oh. They're dead. Killed. That's what they must have been talking about at the church supper the other night, when Ada Freeman's name was mentioned. You don't mean that case in the paper. Yes. Which church was it? St. Delphine's. Robert went to Sunday school there with the others. I think. That's what I was hoping. Well, thank you for your cooperation, Mr. Porter. You're welcome. Robert, did I say too much? I shouldn't have mentioned the church to him. Still, it doesn't matter now. It's nearly over, Robert. Tonight, I think. Yes. The execution will take place. I am an executioner. They didn't do anything. Hello? Miss Cortland? Miss Marion Cortland? I don't suppose you remember me. I'm Robert Porter's father. Oh, yes, Mr. Porter, I remember. Well, of course I remember, Bobby. No, no, I'm not free tonight. I'm afraid it's rather urgent. I must come over and speak with you, just for a moment, please. All right, then, I'll wait for you. Yes, I'll be alone. Goodbye. Goodbye. We'll be together soon, Robert. You and I. But tonight, I am an executioner. What about twelve years ago, a boy fell into the river, couldn't swim? It happened at a senior Sunday school. But tragically, no one saw him fall in. The boy's father was quite bereft. Who was this boy? Who was I? Boy? The father insisted that the other youngsters were to blame, should have saved him. They didn't see the accident. And Marion Cortland was speaking to me about it only last night. Please, can you tell me his name? Robert Porter, by any chance? Porter. Yes, that's it. And you say that Mr. Porter held these six youngsters responsible, and that this Marion Cortland was one of them. Yes. She had nothing to do with it. Of course, none of them did. Where can I find them? The public library telephoned me just before dinner about a page torn from our church bulletin. The page which he announced was a very good way. Just in some important location. Mr. Porter, how good to see you. May I come in? Yes, please do. I've been searching everywhere for you, Marion. Oh, what for? Robert's giving a party next week. His 28th birthday. The others will be there. All of them. Southby, Haggerty, Ada Freeman. Andrew Haggerty? What do you mean? You killed him. No. It was an execution. He paid for his crime. A crime against me. Against Robert. You're mad. Be honest. You left Robert to die in the river. No one tried to save him. No, you must believe me. You're all to 